Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Let's um, let's look at some more contracts. So that VIP thing that went quite well. So let's grab another sore orbital flight for a VIP, and let's do a temperature scan this time. Temperature scan over that above this sector. Done. So that I pop these up. So yes, done, done. If we grab the map, you see it's morning now. We want to be heading over here. Sector Q5-S. So over the water again. So we will grab our vehicle assembly building. And we will just send this one on its way again. This time with Camfort Kerman going up with Dondin on another little excursion. Now we need to make sure that we're doing a temp take pressure readings in flight. So we need to make sure that we have piece of equipment we need to do that which is a pressure sensor so we're good all right save and launch all right so all right so all right and so so we want that one activate navigation return so our particular location is that way which I believe is south so you can just about see it on there, so we will be pitching up, I believe, to make sure we're heading that way. So, without do a further, we will throttle up just a little bit, because I seem to remember in the last episode, go away sticky keys, that um, when I released these we were underpowered slightly. So, let's get going. A one, two, three. Let's go straight up. And let's start pulling up just a little bit. Alrighty then. We are heading vaguely where we need to be going. Goodbye. Pleasingly, they appear to blow each other up. Notice that just a little bit that way. How are we doing on approaching our apoapsis? We want over 70. We're now clear of the majority of the atmosphere, so we can use our other engine for any course corrections as we need, or course extensions. We discover that we are falling short. With that in mind, I think we can flatten off the trajectory with this engine a fair bit. Get rid of it. All right, are we due to be high over that location? We are not. We are, as usual, somewhat off course. All right. Well, we'll wait till we're up at apoapsis, and then we'll figure out which way we need to go. So, in that case, let's flatten that off, which leads me to resolve that we need to be pointing slightly more this way when we get up there. Um, the other thing I will do is so that we don't miss it. So I'll grab that and pop it up over here. So we've got an apoapsis of 82, which is nice and high. When we get up there and we're completely clear of the atmosphere, I will do a full power burn of this engine in that direction. So you can see that's our prograde marker coming up to join us. So as the line... so if we're... excuse me while I wiggle this round. Alright, so that's vaguely... All right, I'm trying to get it so that I think we're pointing in the right direction, but... makes sense that we do want to be pointing at it which is roughly that way and I will make sure I do this burn from <laughs> over here, there we go let's just put it down a little bit, let's stage the engine and give me All right. All 
Alright, so the sticky keys are giving me some problems. But I think we're out of fuel. So that solves that one. Now we'll just find out whether or not we're going to fly over it enough. Will we be high enough? With that in mind, let us fling the spacecraft around so that the engine we don't care about quite so much is going to be doing it. And down into the atmosphere we come. I think we might miss. I think we might miss. Well, we're ETA 40 seconds to the sector. Question is, are we actually going to go over it enough? Oh, we're entering. Log pressure data. Keep pressure data. Keep pressure data. And now we begin the problems of re-entry. So I'm going to wait till all of those are red. Apparently not. <laughs> Apparently I'm just going to push the button in a panicky mode. I'm not going to adjust the parameters until these are saying they are red. Thank you. Right. So I want you to open very high as quickly as possible. Very high and as soon as possible. And I will try and hold our course. Well, I think we're coming in shallower than we did last time, but I think we are coming in faster. So let's see how we do. Come on. Come on. Be slow enough and low enough. Be slow enough and low enough. Alright, there's a lot of atmosphere. I think these guys pop at about 600 and a bit. 500. There they go. repeated thumping you get there as the various parachute systems deploy. I know, Julian. I know. It's very dangerous, all this science that space stuff that your daddy's doing with these little kerbals. He's killed enough of them already. So let's get these ones back down on the ground, shall we? Yeah, let's get these ones safely on the ground and back to their kerbally parents. Back into that underground little hobbity house. Because these are clearly an underground folk. So, uh, a thousand parachutes, as you can get those pop up, and our rate of descent will descend to slow even further. Twelve more seconds till we hit the water. So it looks like you've got to get within about 30 odd kilometres or so by area. Because they said we entered it, with, it said we were about 40 odd kilometres away. I don't know. I mean, have to watch the record. To give it more indication of how far away, away it thought we were. Yeah, we've got about 30 seconds or so away from it. It went, you're entering this area! And then I very quickly hit the log pressure button. Because I didn't want to lose the reports. Oh, nice graphical artifact in the water there. Yeah, we can go down, speed down a little bit further. And now we will touch down on the water. Let's just turn that off now. She does leave it on and leave it upright. We've got plenty of electrical power. And it will go sploosh, and then we will recover. Rather than waiting for it to fall over, you know, potentially break anything. So, data gathered, not much science. Recovered five grand's worth of parts. Tourist got the EVA. Domden got new, uh, new things, but we did get Three grand for that. Atmospheric survey got us another eleven grand. Got you safely home for another eleven grand, and got a fair bit more reputation, which should help, you know. All right. Let's have a look. I'm seeing ferrying two tourists to their destination. That works for me. Above, above, yeah. I am going to adjust the contract thing so it stops giving us these survey ones, because I'm just a little bit tired of them. Alright, test that parachute. Between that altitude range and that speed range. I don't really want to fail it or decline it. Hmm. 
We're not going to get any of those ones up immediately. Oh, hang on a sec. Test a radial stack to clumper at the launch site. Well, let's quickly go and do that then, shall we? TT-38K radial decoupler. New. Body. Uh, decouplers. There we go. Decoupler test. Sorry about the beeping. Sticky Keys is playing a bit of a silly bugger. I will sort it out between episodes. All right then. A couple. I feel that that's probably not what I was meant to do. <laughs> let's um, let's re uh, revert that flight back to launch and double check. Oh, let's activate the part through staging. Ah, <laughs> there we go. I do hope no one was standing over there. All right, <laughs> fine. Are you going to stop rolling anytime soon? Thank you. Recover vessel. Yay! So there's a bit more cash in flight. Stat the clubber in flight. Interesting. All right then. So between that speed range, which is enormous, and between that altitude range. Hmm. Can we do that on our standard tourist trip? Let's have a quick look at the, the, uh, the tourist loader. The visitor P2. Zoom out a little bit. So the visitor P2 does have a stack to clapper there. The question is, are we low enough when we're using it? So we've got to, we'd have to pop it before we hit 20,000. We don't need to worry about speed. The range on the speed is absurd. TR-18. Yeah, right. Let's just check that it is indeed a TR-18 stat decoupler. It is a TR-18 stat decoupler. So it needs to go between 14,000 and 20,000 meters. Well, if we don't get it on this trip, I'm pretty sure we'll get it on the next. Not you. This time we're doing double tourists. So the probe core is going to be doing all the flying, and the probe core doesn't have SAS. So this requires me to be spending an awful lot more time playing around with it. So watch for me to complain bitterly as Sticky Keys tries to kill me. Actually, I'll be right back while I stop, while I stop Sticky Keys from trying to kill me. Alright, so I think I've turned Sticky Keys off. Let's find out. Now I should be able to tap shift. Come on, Bitmark. The LTVS is now off on the AV Yes, great. All right, I can now adjust that. All right. Um, let's get some full throttle going. We don't need to worry about speed. We basically want to be popping that stack decoupler when we get to that altitude. And we will be just tilting off slightly to the right. Um, because we're just going to do a normal orbit.
So we meet, met the conditions. Oh, it's haul a stack the clubber into flight. Have a stack the clubber and meet all those conditions. All right. Fair enough. Good night, you have to test it. Nice. <laughs> now we just need to get these poor folk home. All right. So that's prograde. Get this thing. Retrograde. We're just going to avoid trying to get this thing to turn. Isn't very helpful. And we'll be fighting the controls all the way down. Hopefully, we won't just tumble completely out of control. I mean, that will. Reduce the speed a bit. Yes, you can f hear me furiously tapping. <laughs> As I try to keep this thing vaguely under control. Without the SAS, I'm able to do this a lot myself. I am burning an awful lot less battery power doing it this way. Alright, because as soon as the aerodynamics really start to kick in, we'll have to wait and see just how stable we can keep this thing. Because, doink, no SAS! <laughs> Alright, switch from orbit to surface mode. Please be so kind as to pop at the appropriate moment. This appears to be a shallower trajectory than previous entries, but then I had more time to worry about getting it. Well, to be fair, I was going to say we did a bit more time about getting the things more under control, but no, we had this massive, great big looping kind of wobbly bit at the, at the beginning. I'm on. Edit under 600. And there go the parachutes. Huzzah! will now float gently to the surface, and safely to the surface. Fallings. So Debda and Jallian had a reasonably pleasant flight. I mean, it was nice once they got up there, but let's face it, that launch wasn't fun. It involved an awful lot of quite chaotic spinning. As everything just generally rattled itself around quite bizarrely. I thought as I mentioned that this was it says just says haul doesn't say test so you just had to get it in that situation so it was like yep yep did that <laughs> I almost guaranteed at some point as long as you don't yeah yeah it is a beautiful day isn't it 
Not a cloud in the sky. There's never a cloud in the sky. I don't have that mod installed. What's our altitude? Up there. I've got the altitude up three times at the moment. There's the altitude above terrain, altitude above datum, altitude above terrain. And I keep forgetting where it is. <laughs> keep spending me a bit of time to try and work out where it is. So we'll go all the way under about 50 meters below the surface, drop the time warp. And then hit the ground. After a brief 10 minute suborbital flight. So you were barely weightless for any time at all, and you're very snug in those pots, but you know what? It's all fine. Recover that vessel before the parachutes even had a chance to do anything. You were slow enough, we can go and grab that. <laughs> We got no science. We got, again, 500 grand's worth of parts left. We've got a nice chunk of cash. And we brought those people home. So, travel itinerary, travel itinerary, completed all the travel itinerary. Right, so I'm going to spend a bit of time looking at what we're going to do next. And I've been the Marmoset. This has been the Kerbal Space Krogo. Please remember to like, comment, and or subscribe. Bye for now.